I feel like it's really important to have your own voice and for people to hear it. Even if people don't hear it, you hear it. I'm not really the best with expressing myself or like articulating myself verbally. So art is just my form of just showing how I feel, showing my soul, showing my mind to the world. I use struggle tools, okay? <laughs> Most of the time, <laughs> I use like anything that I could find. There's times where I use like 50 cent paint from Walmart, things that my mom gave me that she used for work. I use whatever is just accessible. You can make anything out of everything. Doesn't matter. When I create or when I, um, you know, paint or draw, it comes from something that resonates within within me. And when I'm in a place where, you know, I feel like I'm at rock bottom, it's really hard for me to create. So most of the times, like just being positive or even surrounding myself with creative people, people who empower me, or even going to museums. I just went to MoMA. I just went to the Whitney. I actually like the whole trio, Andy Warhol. Keith Haring, Basquiat. I also like Kara Walker too, she's amazing. They're innovators. There's this other artist that I really love. I think his name is Sergio. He used to do um, surrealism. He did the painting with the clocks dripping off the side of something. And I love surrealism so much because it reminds me of dreams. And I love the dream world. I love just like floating and just being with things that doesn't really seem like it would be in reality, just like distorted realities or like different dimensions. Usually I need some type of muse or something in front of me to like sketch it out. I usually describe it as being um, celestial because my art doesn't only like show that of this physical realm, it kind of goes beyond that. It goes to something that is connected to the source that we're all a part of, you know? My work is important to me because it's my voice. There's times where I was insecure about myself. There's times where I questioned myself. And I feel like my art kind of like brings that power back. One of my characters is Akimi and she's basically like my guardian angel or my um, spiritual guide. You know how you go through different things in life and then it kind of turns you into the person who you are in the future? So she is that person that I am after all these struggles and all these life experiences. I did do this one painting and she was holding a cup with the lotus inside of it and the smoke said if you love me um if you see the real me would you still love me and basically she kind of solidifies all the struggles that i've been through you know i've been through a traumatic experience with like my ex and how he wanted to basically like make me submissive and he wanted me to just quiet my voice and he didn't like the fact that I was dominant. My mom didn't raise me to be no punk like <laughs> but he was definitely threatened and a lot of men are. I feel like my drawing's been a little personal. This one I recently did. It's Tuka Play at that and this kind of goes back to <laughs> when guys do me wrong it's just like you trying to play that game like you messing with fire like you don't know who I am like <laughs> you know. Art is literally me, like my art is a part of me into physical form. I like the idea of um, bursting thoughts into people's minds. I remember I used to draw on walls just cause, like it's just creating. I love the idea of creating, I love the idea of making stuff um, from nothing. I'm 20, I'm still thinking about like what I actually wanna do. I wanna like make my art kind of more so interactive with the world, whether it's like, you know, owning my own gallery or um, uh, starting my own brand. Now that I'm not in that type of toxic headspace, I feel like I could do that and just focus on that. It hurts, it does, but through the pain, you have to work through it. You gotta gangsta walk it out. You gotta gangsta walk it out and love yourself in the process. <laughs> Was that fine? Okay.